When you think of World War II, you might picture tanks rolling through muddy fields, soldiers marching under the weight of their gear, or perhaps the iconic helmets that defined an era. But among all the tools of survival, there was one unassuming piece of kit that quietly outperformed nearly everything that came after it, the humble sleeping cloth. Not a high-tech sleeping bag, not a layered bivy sack, just a square of waxed canvas and wool that kept men alive through freezing nights, rain-soaked trenches, and snow-covered forests. Today, we're uncovering how this forgotten piece of wartime ingenuity outshined many of our so-called modern outdoor designs, and, well, how its principles can still keep you warm and dry in the wild today. In World War II, every ounce of gear mattered. Soldiers couldn't afford to carry anything that didn't earn its place. The sleeping cloth, sometimes called a ground sheet or blanket wrap, was issued across multiple armies, from the British and Germans to the Soviets and Americans. It wasn't flashy, a rectangle of tightly woven, treated canvas, often backed with wool or oilcloth. But, you know, its simplicity was its strength. It could be laid on the ground, wrapped around the body, or buttoned to another soldier's cloth to form a waterproof bivouac. Unlike modern sleeping bags that trap heat but soak through easily when the ground is wet, this World War II design prioritised adaptability. Soldiers often paired it with their greatcoat or a wool blanket, creating a layered system that kept moisture out while allowing the wool to insulate effectively. In muddy foxholes or on frozen ground, this really mattered. The cloth wasn't just for sleep. It was a tarp, a poncho, a makeshift stretcher, and even a rain catcher. It was gear born from necessity, not comfort catalogues. The genius of the World War II sleeping cloth lay in its construction. Early versions were made from heavy cotton canvas treated with linseed oil or paraffin wax, a process known as proofing. This waterproofed the fabric without making it rigid. The inner side was sometimes lined with wool or a flannel-type weave that stayed warm even when damp. These natural fibres breathe just enough to prevent condensation build-up, something that, honestly, modern nylon bags still struggle with in wet conditions. German and British troops refined this concept even further. The German Zeltbahn, for example, was a triangular sheet of treated canvas with reinforced grommets and buttonholes. A single soldier could wear it as a poncho, or several soldiers could button theirs together to form a multi-person tent. The British ground sheet cape was equally multifunctional, serving as a cloak in the rain and a sleeping cover at night. Both designs were virtually indestructible, requiring only periodic reproofing with wax or oil. That kind of durability is rare today. Many modern sleeping bags rely on synthetic coatings that degrade over time, especially after compression or UV exposure. But the World War II sleeping cloth could be re-waxed in the field using a tin of paraffin or candle wax. Soldiers didn't throw gear away. They maintained it, reused it, and passed it down. Modern sleeping bags excel in controlled environments, clean campsites, tents with floors, and, well, mild humidity. But, you know, Wu soldiers weren't sleeping on tidy terrain. They were on gravel, mud, and snow, often with no shelter except what they could rig themselves. In these conditions, insulation was, frankly, useless without moisture control. The old cloth actually had an edge because it created a microclimate. The waxed canvas repelled water while the inner wool layer trapped body heat. Even when damp 
wool fibers generated warmth through a small chemical reaction as they absorbed moisture. Soldiers could sleep in freezing rain and still wake up functional, which is pretty impressive. Many modern synthetics lose all insulation value once wet, forcing users to rely on external covers or bivy sacks, extra gear the soldiers didn't have space for. There's a reason reenactors and bushcraft experts today still replicate this system. With a wool blanket, a waxed canvas tarp, and a simple folding technique, you can recreate a setup that rivals many high-end bags. Lay the cloth on the ground as a moisture barrier, fold one side over your body like a burrito, and use your coat or a blanket inside. The result? Warm, dry sleep, even in damp, cold conditions. For anyone who camps, hikes, or practices bushcraft, the WW2 sleeping cloth design offers practical lessons you can apply right now. Start with a 6 by 8 foot piece of heavy cotton canvas. Duck canvas or military grade tent cloth works best. Melt a 60 40 mixture of beeswax and paraffin, then brush it evenly across the surface. Warm it gently with a hairdryer or heat gun until the wax soaks in. Let it cool and you have your own weatherproof sleeping cover. Pair it with a wool blanket or a surplus army blanket, and you've recreated the essence of the WP field bedding system. The result is a setup that resists water, insulates even when damp, and doesn't rely on fragile zippers or synthetic coatings. Best of all, you can repair it endlessly. If it rips, you stitch it. If it leaks, you re-wax it. It's survival gear meant to last a lifetime not just a season. What makes the WWE sleeping cloth so remarkable isn't just its performance, it's what it represents. It's a testament to human ingenuity under pressure. Soldiers didn't have the luxury of consumer-grade innovation. They had necessity, experience and field adaptation. That mindset created tools that balance simplicity, durability and versatility qualities we've, perhaps, lost in the race for convenience. Collectors, historians and survivalists still study these designs not out of nostalgia, but because they work. They remind us that the best equipment isn't always the newest. It's the gear that's been proven where it matters most in the field. If you enjoyed this dive into forgotten WWE field gear and the lessons it still offers us today, make sure to subscribe to Echoes of Valor. Share this video with fellow history enthusiasts and survivalists who appreciate the brilliance hidden in simplicity. The past still has plenty to teach us, and here we uncover it one relic at a time.